Well, the fellas in the hood is got a story for y'all. Back in high school, I was seeing this chick on and off, right? I saw many chicks back in high school. <laughs> and I had the biggest crush on her for the longest time in high school. And Har and I hung out, made out, had to uh, spend time together, cuddled, watched movies, and then she would go ghost on me. She was hot and cold. I didn't know what it meant back then. I didn't know why she was playing these games with me. Now I do, obviously, what she was doing. But this girl was apparently the goodiest tushuist. The goody tissue girl, the most goody tissue girl that has ever been around the block. Supposedly, everybody was talking about her when I came to the high school. I moved from another high school. And she was extremely feminine. Blonde girl, white girl, blonde. Like, her hair was almost bleach blonde. And that was her natural hair color. You know, the there's blonde chicks who actually have bleach blonde hair when they're young and then when they grow older their hair slightly turns a little bit darker blonde no man this chick had pale blonde but her her she herself was not pale at all perfect glowing skin big old titties oh my god double d's like i she even let me motorboat them i even went down on her her kitty t- tasted like, uh, how do I compare it? So like strawberries. That's how sweet it tasted. That's, that's how sweet she tasted when I went down on her. And she didn't let me hit it. Right? She was saying that, oh, I'm a virgin. I want to save it till marriage. I'm a goody two-shoe girl. I believe in no sex till marriage. All this other bullshit that, you know, women give us all the time. I'm like, all right, whatever. And then later come to find out, she already lost it before she even knew me or met me. She went to, she goes to college. We still talk. She's, she went two hours away from her, from our hometown to go to college. And I went, I, well, I was in our hometown because I went to a community college first. I was in our hometown. The community college was in the hometown that I was living in. And... We would hang out during the summertime when she would be back home from college. And I still didn't know what the hell she was doing in the semesters. Because I was still blue-pilled as hell. I was like, oh, she was probably focusing on school, you know. Trying to uh, focus on herself. She doesn't have time for guys or whatnot. She'll come back to me. That's the type of mentality I had. Now, obviously, we didn't have a serious relationship going on, as I said. We were kind of on and off. But we, we kind of had a connection or whatever. She was a dancer in high school and college. Uh, I think she stopped dancing, but she was in, she was in a sorority. <laughs> and my dumbass still couldn't pick any of any of the hints up, any of the cues up that how big of a hoe she is, right? I was still trying to give her the benefit of the doubt. And then I moved away two hours from my hometown to go to college after my community college days were over. And then I think last time we hung out was last summer or the summer before that, I can't remember. And uh, it was the end of that and we haven't talked since then, but the last time we did hang out, I wasn't as red-pilled as I am today. And she had a little bit of more attraction towards me because I know why. Why? Because she's starting to hit the end of her prime she's what she's i think 23 right now 23 i think she's 23 i think she was a little bit older than me i'm 22 she's 23 now so she's about to graduate i think she already graduated college i got one more semester left so she knows that she's at the downhill of her slope and now oh where's zeke i miss him i had all this fun in my college days now i miss him now fellas why am i telling you this story Because this was a girl who guys drooled over in high school because of how gorgeous she looked and how feminine she is. And 
she literally fooled me for four years long, well, three years long, telling me lies about how she is not, she's not a hoe and she's not messing around with guys and whatnot. Obviously, I was blue pilled, but I was still a player in high school. I was a st- I was still a fuckboy in high school. I was spinning multiple multiple plates, so I still had somewhat of a knowledge about female nature. I could pick up lies here and there. Not as good as I am today, obviously. But she fooled me for three years, longer than that, because my community college days, I was still blue pill as hell, and I still couldn't pick it up. So five years altogether, she fooled me. And do you know what she was doing in, in the meantime? She was getting her back blown out, man. Holy shit. This chick was taking all sorts of cocks. Black, Hispanic, white, all sorts of it. And apparently she was in a long-term relationship while she was in college. Yeah. Bullshit. She was telling me that how her, how, how her ex was abusive and controlling. Well, controlling, I do believe that. It's abusive? No, I don't. Why do I believe her ex was con- uh, controlling? She's a hot girl. She gets attention from all the dudes. Like she's a she's the perfect example of your snow bunny. Came from a rich rich family as well. Her her house was three stories. Like this bitch is loaded. Well, her parents were. So perfect example of snow bunny. So obviously she had multiple. She has she has attention for days. She has options for days from guys. And obviously her ex boyfriend didn't like that so he got insecure about it so he started being controlling yeah i believe that but abusive no i don't believe that because you know if you just raise your voice just a little bit oh he's abusive bitch shut up shut the fuck up you're abusive to me you're mentally abusing me being a fucking hoe and putting me through all this mental gymnastics anyways so she was doing all that while fooling me and her, her boyfriend. And this was supposed to, and, and again, she was a church girl and all that. Now, we, obviously, we know church girls are the biggest hoes out there. We know that. So my point is, fellas, how, how can you trust anyone? And who can you really trust? And I've been with girls, fellas, who, were, who look like complete sluts. And when I got with them, after a smash him or whatnot, I have never met another girl who's more down to earth. Now, obviously, it was mainly because she viewed me alpha as hell. Obviously, I kept my Q's and P's. I was on my Q's and P's. I did everything I was supposed to be doing right. Obviously, that came into play. But these girls were supposed to be, or, or were supposedly the biggest hoes on the high school and college campus. And they were the most loyal creatures to me. So who can you really trust? The answer is nobody except yourself. I have another story. Fellas, I got stories for days. How do you think I come here and talk all this shit? How do you think all these things that I say uh, are relatable to you guys? Because I've been through it all my, my, by myself. I've done it all. I have seen it all. And I'm kind of glad I did. Because I learned my lessons very early. As I said, I'm only 22. And I'm so glad that I learned my lessons at this early of an age. So I have the rest of my life to get my shit together and keep my head straight and not get distracted. And also, I learned the red pill. I took the red pill at an early age. I'm so grateful for that. So glad. So lucky, to be honest. Most guys don't even have the luck to come to the red pill at an early age like this. And that's why I tell you guys, uh, that's why I try to spread this message so that more and more younger guys can wake up to this. Because the younger guys are the next generation. We are, they are the future. We can't change anything if the future, if the current generation is already fucked and the next generation coming up is is gonna be fucked fucked as well. It's gonna be screwed, screwed over as well. That's why I tell you guys to share my message. Anyways, so another story, my ex girlfriend, the last one that who I dated for a year and a half, she was a virgin, and I knew she was a virgin for a fact because I had to teach her everything from ground up, including how to make out. And when I put it in, when I stuck it in, oh my God, that was the tightest I have. That was the tightest, tightest thing I have felt since I don't even know what. She was hella tight. So, anyways, and <clears throat> she could not go a day 
without talking to me, without um, sucking my dick, without making love, getting it on. And she couldn't go a day without praising about me to her family and her friends. And this girl switched up on me. This girl ended up cheating on me. Obviously, I fucked up a lot of the things in the relationship. I made some mistakes. Some big ones. By, by mistake, what I really mean is that I wasn't doing what I, what I was supposed to be doing. I was not alpha. I was, I was beta as hell. But that's another story. My, 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 my last relationship brought me to the red pill. So that's a very important story in my life. But we'll talk about that on another day. But, uh, yeah, man, the, the reason why I say this is because this girl, this wholesome, both of these girls, this wholesome girls, turns out to be complete sluts. And that's why I made a video say, uh, saying, uh, the titling, they're all sluts, you just have to get it out of them. I got it out of them. The slut behavior, I got it out of these, out of these girls. One of my first exes is a is literally on seeking arrangement right now. And she's what, 18, I think, 18 or 19. 19 or 20 years old, she's on seeking arrangement. That's how big of a hoe she turned out to be. Again, she was a virgin as well. I met her when I was in high school as well. My last, my last ex, I met her when I was in college and she was in high school. But anyways, fellas, I'm telling you guys all this is because I have turned so many good girls into hoes, or let me rephrase that. I have seen so many good girls turning out to be hoes. I'm not turning them into hoes. I'm just giving them the first initial taste of what the fun really is really like. And once they get that taste, they can't stop getting enough of it. That's why they keep doing. Go, that's why they keep going down that path. So who can you really trust? And and this is why modern women today are so much harder to trust. I always say this. You can get married and have a kid and all this, then the, this, then the other, have a prenup or whatever. It's not the fact that she will take you to divorce court. It's not the fact that she actually will turn out to be the praying mantis. She's actually going to switch up on you. It's the fact that she can. And if she does it, she'll, gonna, she'll get away with it empty hand, uh, clean-handed with, every, with, with everything that you have worked hard for. And you're going to be left behind with nothing. That's why I say don't get married for as long as the laws are not in our favor. But you guys still want to come in here and ask me questions like, how do I find a wife after high school? How do, how do I know if she's a wife of material? Are conservative women wife of material? You guys still ask me this kind of crap. You're asking me the wrong questions. Your mindset is still not right. You should not be asking me how to get women. You should not be asking me where to find the wife. You should not be asking me if she's a wife of material. She should be asking herself that why am I not getting his commitment? How can I cuff him down? Those are the right questions. You guys are asking the wrong questions. You should, this shouldn't be, commitment settling down shouldn't even be anywhere in your head. You, you should be striving for success, striving for betterment of yourself. But hey, nobody wants to talk about that, right? Nobody even wants to hear about self-improvement. Everybody talk shit on that. Ah, oh, here we go. He's, he's talking about purpose and self-improvement and all that crap again. Yeah, I am. And you're going to listen to this fucking shit. you goddamn right I am. Because that's what you need to hear. Not this fairy tale romance bullshit. This shit don't last. Tell me, what was your longest relationship? Exactly. They all fail. They all fail. 98% of relationships fail. So you're telling me that you want to take that you want to take those chances of 2% success rate and go out and waste your time trying to look for that perfect relationship? How stupid is that? How retarded is that? 98 to 2 is the ratio and you you say that oh, I want to take my odds. Really? Really? That's why we're losing at this game, fellas. That's why women are winning over us. That's why they treat us like shit. Because we don't have our own priorities straight. 
When we have our own priorities straight, we're going to value our time. When we value our time, we're going to respect ourselves. When we respect ourselves, we're not going to let anybody walk over us. We're going to have a backbone. And that's attractive to women. And that's when we're going to have other people's respect. That's when we're going to earn other people's respect, including hoes. I was an athlete in high school. I all autom- and I, was, I played football in high school. Automatically, I got the respect from men and women. I was a tough son of a bitch. And you guys can't even take any negative crit- uh, criticism. You're going to sit there and be a keyboard warrior and fire away text messages to reply to somebody's negative comments. Let them say whatever the fuck they want to say. Why does it matter to you? You're feeding the trolls. That's what, you, that's what they're wanting. I'm going on a different tangent right now. Fellas, bottom line is you can't trust anybody. You can't even trust your own damn family. I have, I have had stories after stories after stories where family members screwing other family members over. Even their own, even parents screwing each other, uh, parents screwing their kids over. One of the one of my buddies I live with right now, his mom was a crack whore, and he screwed him over. She screwed him over, his whole life. Left him with debt. Again, it's not the fact that people will do that to you. It's not the fact that your girlfriend will cheat on you. It's not the fact that your family members will do that to you. It's not the fact that your business partner will stab you in the back. It's the fact that they can. So who can you trust 100% to put your faith in them? To give them with something valuable to hold on to? like your time, like your energy, like your investment? The answer is nobody. You can't trust anybody. Even if people who helped you in the past, even people who have watched your back in the past, you still can't trust them 100%. You still got to have your guard up with them because people change, as I just gave you examples of girls. Not just women, anyone. And especially women, fellas, especially women. You guys don't believe it when I say that she has more options than the McDonald's drive through menu, okay? You guys really don't believe it. So why don't you become a hacker or get in touch with a nerd who's a hacker and hack her phone and then just look through the conversations of, with dudes that she has. Just look at the num- number of guys she has on her cell phone. Just look at it. Maybe, that'll, then, maybe, maybe then you'll believe it. Matter of fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need to bring a girl's cell phone over one of these days in one of my videos and show you guys a girl who's supposed to be very innocent very wholesome they're all sluts fellas you just have to get it out of them if you know how to get it out of them they will let it out on you I promise you that girls who are shy who are introverts turned out to be the biggest freaks in the bedroom with me because I got it out of them and that's why you cannot trust anybody. That's why someone's appearance, how they're acting in front of other people, all that facade is nothing but facade. That's what they, they, they want other people to, to perceive them, to view them in a certain way. But you have to see straight through all that bullshit. And practice is going to make that skill perfect. It's, it's going to make that skill better at least, not perfect, but better. You're going to get better at seeing through people's bullshit the more you practice that. Let me know your, your stories, your experiences of dealing with fake people, of dealing with people who switched up on, uh, who, who switched up on you, of dealing with women who sw- switched up on you. Vindictive women. Women who cheat. Because it just takes one woman to break our trust for all women to take that blame. Why? Because no woman is taking the man's side. No woman out there is saying that, oh, what she did was wrong. They're keeping their mouths shut. No woman is going out on the streets and marching against feminism. They're keeping their mouths shut. And that's why you can never trust them till they start showing through their work, through their actions, that they're trustworthy. Not just through their words. Words are cheap. Follow me on Instagram at ZekePeak. Like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, stay blessed, stay beautiful, and above all, 
stay classy.